I believe you had a fantastic weekend. A week has just started and we are here on Let's Talk to make sure that it becomes a very refreshing week for you. Welcome to Let's Talk Entertainment here on Joy News on Multi TV. Today we have a lot of issues coming your way, but we'll be talking about one main thing, which is what kind of experiences do entertainment reporters go through? We have some of them sharing their experiences of one report that led to them being accused of falsehood or something like that. Well, so we have a lot of them talking to us here on Let's Talk Entertainment. Don't go away. We bring you more after this break. So, yes, we, we find an out from a fellow journalist, fellow reporters. What experience has really been like for them? I mean, in their line of reporting, um, have they ever said something that later on turned out to be false? Or uh, they were lashed at uh, by the person the report was about? I have been joined by Della Aglano, who is an entertainment reporter here at Mod Media Group Limited, uh, to be specific, my draw online. And he will be telling us his experience as a, a, an entertainment journalist okay i think it has happened once that was way back i suspect i think in 2010 if i'm not mistaken where i i interviewed majid about heart of men i don't know if you remember that movie and unfortunately when i, I interviewed him though i didn't have a recorder on me so i just jot down what he said then i did a story and already people were not happy with the movie because they called it a porn movie that there was too much nudity in it. So the movie did receive a lot of backlash. And I think because of that, irrespective of what he said, people attacked him and they bashed him. And later on, he was angry that that's not what he said in an interview and I misquoted him. And I think because I didn't have a recording to back it, clearly I did admit and said, okay, no, probably, probably I did commit an error because I didn't have a recording to back it. And maybe yeah, I might have misquoted it, which I accepted that. And I think for some time I did really have difficulty in terms of even getting him to even interview him. I quite remember he wasn't happy with me for some time. But I think we've gone past that. And I quite remember that was last year. A story was published on my journal. And what people do always forget is that I am not my journal. Like, it's a whole dedicated team of people who work there. I work on editors there too. And a story was published. And a colleague in the industry who also was a female who was well known did attack me on radio that I published a, story, a false story about her. And, 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 and it, hurt, it did hurt me in the sense that as a colleague, if you see a story and you know we have a relationship, what do you do? You call me and you go like, oh, I've seen this story, but I don't recall granting interview or anything like that. But when you go and attack me for that, I thought it was unfortunate because somebody had posted a story and the story didn't say it wasn't that bad or false, but because of the attack, you get out of it. You get angry and go on radio and attack me. Who did not? I didn't even publish, so I didn't even write the story. So it, it does happen. And the reason why this is now becoming an issue is that because there are a lot of blogs and websites now, everybody is now looking out for news. So people, so and I'm not saying it happens, though, but some people will get to probably just make stories or false stories and just put them out there to create bad images for people. So yeah, I mean, for me, in my life, I've been bashed for stories, two stories so far. One, I didn't work on it, so I didn't even post the story. The other one, I did the interview all right, but because I didn't have a recording to back it, yes, the person won at the end of the day. Well, that's quite unfortunate. Uh, sorry for you, my sympathies. But uh, well, we're still talking to a lot more uh, journalists, uh, reporters who really ha may have suffered uh, one attack or the other because of the reports they put out there about a particular celebrity. Stay on. <laughs> Dorina Vue is also an entertainment reporter with Hits FM and she also has an experience to share. I've had an experience with, should I call it, singer Miss Bell. Um, I, I don't know if you remember the incident where she was um, caught by the police in traffic, I think somewhere in Accra, and she was arrested. I had the opportunity to speak to my boss who actually booked an interview for me with her. I called her. We agreed, she agreed to speak to me. I did the interview, everything. I gave to my various platforms, of course, Joy FM, Hits FM, and then it aired. And the next minute was, Ms. Bell said, I did not tell her it was an interview, and she did not know I was recording to play it on air. So then I asked myself, when I called you, or did I call you as a friend? Because you are not my friend, you are not my sister, you are not my family member. And 
Lo and behold, all I could see was Miss Bell was on every entertainment platform, casting insults, calling me all sort of names. And the last one I remember, she called me a witch. Mm. That's yes. Like a blue. Yes, a witch. And I asked myself, what would I do for somebody to call me a witch? And she claims I was destroying her career. And at the lot around, she did it for almost a year going everywhere calling my name insulting me and saying all sort of things about me but i gave myself that patience until a day where i had to report to my management and they had to call her over she came crying crying that i had destroyed her career we gave her the opportunity to talk and that was it i didn't see Ms. Bell again and <laughs> it looks as if i'm not the only victim now Ah, okay. Uh, but it, uh, well, whatever you reported about her, was it the truth or you misquoted? It was the truth. Somewhere around 2002, uh, 12, yeah. I did a story. Um, it was about an interview that we did with one Ghanaian musician, Miss Bell. Okay. And in the interview, she said she has a crush on Pastor Mensa Otabel. And as usual, as an entertainment reporter, I chose that angle. I did the story, it became big. Some of the dailies also picked it and they also publicized it. And later, they came out to say that whatever I wrote was falsehood. It was malicious, they know all these kind of negative words. And they also did a publication on GhanaCelebrities.com that Adam FM's Day of Shame in the Name of Journalism, talking about what I, what I wrote. So what I did was to read the story that I did on air. Okay. I read this yes, yeah. on air, then I played the voices. The voices of the interview between you yeah, and Miss Bell. Okay. Between the presenter, because it was on the drive time. Okay. I recall it was Dr. Sanka who was doing the interview. Okay. So we played back the interview on the drive time. Okay. So we opened the phone lines for Ghanaians to judge whether what I wrote was wrong or they are trying to dodge the whole issue. And people started lambasting them. So finally, finally, um, they had to come, apologize, and all this blah, blah, blah. But one thing I'll say is that. I'll plead with our artists, our stars, weigh your tongue before you speak. Because we are journalists. You don't choose our angles for us. We will choose our angles based on what you say. So if you say something and we write and tomorrow you turn around to attack us, it wouldn't change us from writing. We will still write. So weigh your tongue before you speak. Don't speak before you think because you always have problems with us. Because we will write and write and write till we die. We will talk and talk and talk and talk till we die. Once that's what we do, why not? When you speak, we say it. Okay, so Becky in a moment joins us to also share her experience. It's amazing her, our own Becky also has her experience to share. Stay on. I had an experience with Miss Bell. I was um, at home one time and I, and I had a call that my interview was being aired on Plus FM. Uh, talking about Miss Bell choosing Shatawali over Samini. Miss Bell apparently says that she didn't say that. So the video was being played. Actually, the sound was being played on Plus and she, she went ahead to record uh, another video telling, explaining what she didn't say when in fact she said it. I was I didn't want to talk about that one because I mean I actually had a video I had you on on video saying that you like Shatawali you, you prefer Shatawali to Samini because Samini was uh, has become prim and proper I can't remember the lines but yeah that that, that was my experience this, I had it with Miss Bell and it was the only thing that it was all, all the reports that I had um, that generated something like that Okay, so at least uh, for what Ms. Bell said about uh, Samini and Shatawale, that later on she says that uh, she never said it that way. We have the footage here, so here is how Ms. Bell exactly spoke about it. So um, between um, Shatawale and Samini... I am a Shatawalian. <laughs> I, I love Samini. 
don't get me wrong, I love Samini, but now Shatawale is trending. So I'm a Shatawale. Although I love Samini, I am a full time Shatawalian. <laughs> Well, I, I, what, what, what is it about Shatter? I know he, he pulls crowd. His songs are exciting. Yeah, you, you can dance to his songs. And Samini as well. What, what is this about? What is it about uh, Shatter? Um, Shatawale is down to earth. Shatawale inspires the people on the street. Shatawale is not so, okay, I'm self-made and all that. And... He speaks his mind. He's not afraid of anything. He's very confident. Samini used to be like that, but all of a sudden he's like, okay, I'm prim and proper. And then the people on the street were like, okay, he's left us. So it's not like I don't love Samini anymore. I still love Samini, but I am a full-time Chatawalian. <laughs> Marco Creco Mante also joins us to share his experience as an experienced journalist, entertainment uh, person. He's dealt with a lot of artists, a lot of celebrities, and so has a good idea how managers would want to manage their artists to, you know, come out with one story or the other, whether it's true or false. Uh, we are privy to this one. He will tell us today whether all the stories that the celebrities put out there are true or sometimes it's just for publicity. Not all of them are true. Uh, because uh, years ago, we just had a few stars, and so it was very easy to be noticed uh, with a few media houses, with just only GBC, so it was very easy to be noticed. But today, many radio stations, many TV stations, especially the digital platform, uncountable. And so one will struggle to be relevant uh, in terms of uh, getting attention from the media and all. So people do all sorts of things uh, to... to to survive or to exist. Okay, let me just poke you. Um, among the artists you managed, did you ever put a story there that was never true? Just to keep them famous or keep them in the discussion or in the media? I didn't do any one uh, that would make them popular, but I did one that would enhance sales. That's why Jamanes Kokoko, uh, somewhere in February, we gave an impression that it was replicated in the UK and uh, it was stuck at the airport. Uh, people queued to buy, and the distributor was called on phone. Komla Dumo called him because he wanted to be sure journalists they always want to probe. So he did, and the distributor said yes. It's the fastest selling album at the moment, and uh, people had come to sleep in hotels waiting for uh, us to clear the stock from the port. Yeah. Yes, it was a hot album, but that aspect of uh, people were sleeping in the hotel to, to purchase or to queue to get in the next day, yeah, that, 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 was, uh, that was a stimulant. <laughs> <laughs> well, so at least today you have an idea what, to what extent some of them would go, you know, just to keep us excited about them, their products. Um, Mark, let me also find out from you, why do you think an artist would say one thing and when after it's been reported would come back again and say, I never said that. And when you play it back at them, then they, they seem to go sober. It's because you see, sometimes emotions uh, make us not think right or not sound prudent in our submissions. And so sometimes based on what we hear, we just don't go through uh, deep and then we just want to respond when you get home the accounts have a saying that sumie margin you sleep over it or when you are unwinding even when you get home you're unwinding you realize that ah, what did i say did i make sense with this but it could be too late to go and change and so then they think of a plan b in case it comes up how do i defend or react yeah then they come some of them who are not very good with PR say, this is not what I meant. And then they try to give a subjective meaning to what they said. So yeah, it's normal with every human being, not just celebrities. Let me just uh, go straight. Uh, Miss Bell is in the news today about having said one thing and coming out to say she never meant it that way and that um, she was forced to actually come on to say whatever she said. Do you think in her case, she's, uh, she feels that the issue is dying off, so she needs to rekindle it, so she remains in the limelight, so she comes back to deny and make... You've seen her video? 
I haven't, but I've heard the audio. Okay. Why would she go to that extent? Sometimes I'm speaking my mind. Maybe that's how she feels. That's how she, she wants to present herself. I'm speaking my mind. But then after speaking your mind, like I said, you get home and you realize that, hmm, because you see, every environment, uh, every uh, uh, culture has the things they accept and the things they don't. And so you realize that this is a no-go area, this is a taboo. In Ghana, you dare not talk against Christ. How do I make amends? Then they find ways of defending. So I'm sure that at the time, that, that was how she felt. That was how she wanted to present the thing. But look, going, reading between the lines, now she realizes that in Africa or in Ghana, Christ is untouchable. Yeah. <laughs> well, so perhaps a piece of advice to you, Ms. Bell. Uh, Christ really is untouchable in certain areas. So next time, watch out how you say you don't believe in Christ. Uh, you can just say you are just an atheist or something like that. And perhaps you get away with it, yeah? All right, so let's talk entertainment. We bring you more stories. Hang on there. Catch you same time tomorrow with another edition of Let's Talk Entertainment. Thank you so much for your time here.